Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. Can you stand up and show us who you are? <laughs> this is Tristan. He's a corgi. And this is episode 43 of Conversations with a Corgi. And we are continuing in our journey exploring some of the things that we do with T-Touch equipment to work with your dogs. And so today, I have a couple of special ways to work with a dog that pulls that I want to show you as best I can sitting down in my kitchen. <laughs> and then I have a few other things that I use that I'd like to share with you. The first one of those is this. It is a feather duster that you can get online. It has a retractable end so you can make it longer. Great for dusting, but one of my friends who found this realized that this is a really good tool to use similarly to a wand, particularly, she said, with rabbits because the end is very soft. But it's also a great tool to use with dogs and cats as long as the kitties don't get their nails stuck in it. So I can use this as a wand. Tristan's wearing a leash right now, so it's a little hard to see him. And I can just do some tea touches I can stroke his whiskers, which I would do with a cat or a bunny. And I can do big T touches on his back. And the nice thing about having this be retractable is that as you get closer to the animal, you can just make your wand a little shorter. What do you think, Tris? <laughs> They come in two or three different colors. I, of course, have a blue one and a purple one. And you can use them this way to make circles or with the flat side. I think these are great. I've really um, been so grateful that my friend told me about this wonderful addition to the wand <laughs> package that we can do with T-Touch. Then you can make it really short. And in this way, you can really nicely prepare an animal for um, accepting tea touch with your hands. If you have an animal that doesn't really, isn't familiar being touched, you know, a feral cat or something like that that you're working with, or a really frightened dog. And then you might progress to the next step of using that sheep fleece that I showed you um, with your hand to do the touches on top of the sheep fleece. We'll pretend this is a sheep fleece. And we just do the touches. You have to turn that way so they can see you, Trissy. And then you can gently make the transition from using the wand with the fuzz on the end to the sheep fleece, and then using your hand to do the touches, which is a much more effective experience for your dog and for you. But if you're working with an animal that doesn't like to be touched, um, this is another way that you can transition to them. And again, this is a feather duster that came from Walgreens or CVS online. They're about $4. They're a little bit hard to find, but they are a really great addition to your T-Touch tool package. I'm pretty happy with the ones I have, and they have been really good, particularly, as my friend suggested, working with rabbits that are hard to touch, that have been handled roughly, that really need... Um, to have something between you and them to get them familiar with touch again. But even though I can touch Tristan everywhere and he loves being touched, I am also able to use this with him and, you know, give him another experience of his body. One of the other things in my T-Touch toolkit here, and I I have to say, we don't use these as much as we used to, and mine are all really small because I have a small dog, and if I'm working with a big dog, I usually have other ones available. But we use these ponytail scrunchies like this, little round things that are soft, and I really should get some larger ones. I have little teeny ones. I often use these on small dogs. That's another reason I have so many little ones. I've used them on a lot of Yorkies and um, little tiny pugs and Shih Tzus. So I haven't needed these on big dogs as much. And if I 
use wraps and other things. I haven't needed them, but can you stand up, Tris? Oh, I'll show you on one of the stuffed dogs how we use these. Ugh. So if you have a dog that's prancing a lot and not really grounded and needs to get a better sense of their feet, we will just slip these on their legs like this. And it's sort of like putting uh, wraps on a horse in a way, but um, it works differently with dogs. Instead of prancing, it helps ground them. It help makes, helps make them aware of their feet and where their feet are. If you've been walking over um, ground poles, for instance, and the dog is stumbling over them, the, rat, the little um, ponytail holders on their feet can help make them pick up their feet and walk better through the poles. I've also used them um, as preparation for paw work um, and toenail trimming, so they're useful for that. And I usually try to coordinate the colors a little differently so that, you know, the dog either has all the same color or, you know, for instance, red in the front to help ground him and blue in the back to help keep him connected to his front, something like that. It just depends on what you see your dog needing. I don't recommend, you know, having a different color wrap on every leg necessarily. Um, I just happened to pull these colors out of the bag at this point. They have been really useful for me with dogs that are ungrounded. A lot of small dogs, um, like I said, Yorkies, that the person has been repeatedly picking up when the person or the dog is nervous. And so the dog has lost his confidence to be able to be on the ground and feel secure. So these are a great addition if that's been happening with your dog to help him gain some confidence. We also, um, what else do we do with these? I've used them also for a dog like maybe who has had surgery on an ACL on one side and isn't fully weight bearing on that leg. I might just put one rat, a little ponytail holder on that leg to help them reconnect to the ground with that leg and just bring some awareness of that leg and some proprioceptive feeling to that leg to try to encourage them to resume their um, normal four-legged gait with symmetry from side to side. So as much as it seems a little strange to put something on the leg that they're not using the same as the others, it actually encourages a more symmetrical weight bearing because of the connection in the brain from the right to left side. You can also try putting it on the opposite side of the surgery or the injury and see if that changes your dog's gait as well. So there are many options here and you just have to see what's going to work the best for you with the situation that you have with the dog you're working with that day. I mean, so many things of T-Touch, you learn a way to do it that works for a lot of dogs. And then, of course, you go home and try it on your own and you get a dog that that conventional way didn't work very well. So you have to always be able to think outside of the box. And so you have to be able to, you know, know what these are good for and then use them in ways that are useful to you and the dog that you're working with that day. And we don't leave these on too long. I mean, they're usually kind of tight for a lot of dogs, no matter what size you get. They're also a good thing to do in preparation of your dog maybe needing to wear little socks. Um, I've had two corgis that needed to use a cart and they needed to have um, booties on their back feet so that when they're dragging them, they don't get torn up. So I use the, the little wraps on the back legs on their back feet to help prepare them for the booties. They're also useful to hold the booties on. You know, a corgi foot that's curved this way is just a smooth thing. And anything you put on it in terms of a sock usually falls off. I've had some good luck with um, a few brands of um, little socks for dogs, but they tend to slide off because the dog is dragging them. So these can be useful for that. The other thing that I like about these in terms of a corgi with um, DM or any dog that has some potential paralysis in the hind legs, and this goes for cats too. I've worked with a few cats with strokes. Just putting it on the leg they're dragging really helps them. And oh, we have a ladybug visiting us this morning. He's crawling across the table. My house is inundated with ladybugs. I, I literally take like 50 to 100 outside every day and then have to sweep up the ones that didn't make it. Anyway, these are also great for, um, like with my corgis with DM, before they got to the point where they needed the cart and they just had like one leg dragging, I would put like three of this color 
um, one color, any color really, usually I use blue, and then put the pink one or something different, bright and different, on the leg that's dragging to help remind the dog to use that leg differently. And it just gives information to the nervous system. You know, you can't make muscles work that aren't working, but if you can change the dog's awareness, the nervous system's awareness of that leg, you can improve function in that leg and maintain it for a longer time than if you didn't do this. So I find this a really useful thing to do with my dogs that have had DM. And again, any dog that's had any kind of an injury to the lower leg or the paw, um, using this on just one on that leg can really help bring awareness to that leg and improve your dog's gait overall. Sometimes if I have a senior dog and I'm doing balance activities with them and they've had some balance issues, I will put the little leg bands on them as before I do the balance exercises just to help ground them, help them have a deeper connection to their feet before I put them on something like a, a squishy dog bone or any kind of foam rubber or something like that where I'm really asking them to do some harder balance and the awareness in their feet just really helps remind them where their feet are and how to shift the weight among their legs in order to balance better. So I've used them for that. Um, they can be really, really useful. So I have a little bag of them I keep in my T-Touch bag, all different colors and sizes. And as I said, I don't have that many larger sizes. I need to get some more. Another thing I want to talk to you today about is the ways that we use the leash. There are a couple of different things that we can do. Let's use this leash for one of them. If I have a dog like Jack, who's a little bit wild today, and he's pulling on the leash a lot, I can use one of these leashes with two snaps on them. And I can either attach one end to his collar on on his case, I'm going to attach it to the harness. And usually in a shelter, you don't have the fortune of having a harness for your dog. You just have a collar. So there's a, a way of using the leash that we call the balance leash. So you're just going to attach it to one point on the collar or the harness, and you make a necklace around the front of your dog like this. And then you want what we call, where it attaches back here, you want what we call a sleeping snap. That means the snap isn't being pulled up, it's just resting. So that you're using the necklace around the front of the dog to give him signals to stop pulling and to rebalance. And it's really not, you know, pulling is being out of balance. And as I said, a dog that's out of balance physically is out of balance emotionally. And we're trying to keep our dogs um, balanced so they can think and respond instead of reacting. So we just take this necklace, flip it over his head, and just give him little signals like this. I'm exaggerating. It would be much smaller. All you have to do really is have some tension in the leash and squeeze your hand, and that gives him a signal. In horses, this would be a half halt when you're riding. You just give him a little bit of a signal to rebalance in his body, and if he starts to pull, you just ask him to come back and rebalance. This will prevent tons of injury potential for your dog's back, his patellas. Remember his knees are back here and a lot of dogs are getting surgery there these days, especially a lot of the small breeds that do what um, one of my friends calls a skip to my loo when they're walking, they're trotting along and then one hind leg is uplifted because the patella slipped out. So pulling, even for a little chihuahua, is not a good thing. And of course, we often ignore pulling in little small dogs because they are little and we can just hold them. But you got a golden retriever on the end of your leash pulling. You're really aware of that. And so you're looking for ways to help him stop pulling. So even if you have a harness and a good one, the balance leash, just throwing it over his head like a necklace, is a good thing that you can use to just ask him to come back into balance. You're just giving them a little bit of a signal. And you want that snap that's attached to the collar or the harness to be what we call sleeping. So it's just resting so that you're giving the dog signals with just the necklace around the front of him. So if you are volunteering at a shelter and walking a dog and all you have is a leash and a collar and you want to do right by him and try to help him stop pulling on the leash because he's going to be so excited to be out, just throw the leash around his front like a necklace 
and given these little signals to come into balance. And if you are volunteering at a shelter, you can make a really big difference in a dog's life by having them be polite and balanced on a leash because, again, physical balance translates to emotional balance. And if the dog is walking politely on the leash, he's less likely to do any of the things that would make a person want to bring a dog back to a shelter or not adopt him in the first place. So this is the balance leash, just a necklace around the front. Give little signals with your hands. And yes, you are holding the leash with two hands. If you're very dexterous and used to ride horses, you can put them in one hand and use your pinky and your first finger, but that's pretty complicated, especially if you have an unfamiliar dog. It's easier to just keep two hands on the leash and give him these signals. So that is the balance leash. We have another one, which Tristan, Sleepy Tristan is modeling. Can you stand up this? We have to model your leash. Come on up, come on up. <laughs> He's wearing the balance leash plus. So what that is, you can see here on Jack, we just had a necklace around the front and you might have noticed it kept sliding down. So what we did with the plus is go between the front legs so that now I can give him a signal and I don't have to worry about losing the leash. Now if you are working in a shelter, can you stand up please <laughs> with an unfamiliar dog? You're going to have trouble trying to sneak the leash through the collar. Um, if they're plunging and leaping. So you might not get to use the plus until you've been with the dog for a while or if you've got a calm dog to start. Can you stand up, hon? Come on, Bess, up, up. So what you're left with is holding the leash here in one hand and on your side, you have the leash that doesn't have a handle. If you have a T-touch leash, you can, of course, snap it and make a handle. So you want it on the side that you're standing is where all this stuff is. So let me show you how to do this. Stay up this. It is slipped through the collar and we don't really use this with a harness. So you have your dog just on his leash here. On the side that you're not standing, you take the leash and slip it behind his elbow and then up through the collar. And now you have two handles to hold your dog. This will really, really help a leaping, plunging dog or a pulling dog. We have other things we do with dogs that are twisting and turning, but they're quite a bit more complicated to show you today. Can you stand up again, hon? Come on up. Come on up. Good boy. Let me just show you again how to do this Balance Plus because it is so useful and many people aren't going to run out and buy a new harness necessarily and they might have a dog that pulls and this is really effective and it's so simple so turn your buns this way honey all you do you have your leash attached to your collar you slip the leash on the side where you're not around the dog's elbow see how it's just going in through the fluff under his elbow and then you're going to come up through the collar on your side So now you've got a loop through his chest and two handles to hold him by. Okay, can you turn that way so they can see what it looks like on my side? That way, this. Look out the window. He says, I am falling. <laughs> so you can see on my side. Now the trouble with this is when you switch sides, you do have to switch how you have it between their legs. So make sure you're really familiar with how to do this. Um, or just walk your dog on one side if you have a dog that is really in need of help to learn to stop pulling. But this is way more effective. And again, you want this snap on the collar to be what we call sleeping. So you're not pulling on that. You're using the leash around the chest to give them signals to come back into balance. And again, this is like a half halt with a horse. If you have a horse or if you've ever ridden very much, you just give a little signal. And you can see with Tristan, just looking at his top line here, notice how I'm just rocking him back, rocking him back. And that's all you need to do to bring your dog into balance when you're walking. Okay, you can sit down now. So that's the Balance Plus Leash. And we use that a lot. And it's a great gift to anybody who has to work with a dog from a shelter or people that just don't have a lot of money maybe that can't be buying a new harness and they just have a leash. This is a great thing that you can do and you don't even need to make a handle with this end if you have a leash that only has one snap. 
you can snap it to the collar and just hold this end. The only complication with this is that if you do have a really short dog like mine, <laughs> you need a pretty long leash to do this and be comfortable when you're walking so that you're not bent over. And I do use a 12 foot leash for this or a nine foot leash. Um, some of the shorter leashes that you can buy are only four feet. So in that case, you might need to use two of them. You can also just use any piece of rope that's sturdy and lightweight because you don't want to really yank on your dog. But most people have a lot of leashes around the house, at least one or two. So if your leash is too short, just um, cook them together and then run it past their elbow, through their chest and up on the other side. And that's the balance leash plus. Can you sit down, hon? Go ahead, sit, sit. Doesn't want to sit. So that's just a couple of extra um, things I do with T-Touch equipment. You know, using the leash in two different ways around their chest, like a necklace, which is the balance leash, through the front legs and up on your side of the collar. That's the balance leash plus. And then we have these little hair scrunchies. Where did the scrunchies go, Beth? <laughs> that we can use on their legs to give them a new sense of their connection to the earth and to encourage them to use one leg that may have had an injury and so they are walking unevenly and to improve their balance. These are really useful to use before you do a balance exercise. And as I said, if you have a dog with any kind of neurologic condition, even recovering from Lyme disease or Rocky Mountain or any of the tick diseases, these can really help get them reconnected to their feet and to the earth and to improve their gait. And then we have my fun feather duster that can work as a wand to give your dog tea touches if you can't get near him. Great for feral cats, great for very shy bunnies, and also pretty pleasant feeling just to use on a nice friendly dog that you work with on a daily basis. And it's just a different feeling. It's, these are really soft um, and they're fun. And I wonder if they pick up dog hair. Let's see, Tristan. I'm not so good on picking up the dog hair, but it's a nice thing to have in your T-Touch toolkit. So those are some of the things we looked at today. Tomorrow I will be, as I've mentioned several times, at this equine wellness fair in Connecticut at Rays of Light Farm. And um, hopefully I'll be able to do a live from there and I will be there and be set up in time to do that without too much of a scramble. And then Monday and Tuesday, I'll be off because I'll be at my job as an educator. And I will see you on Wednesday when we may begin to look at some of the T-Touch wraps. And just another reminder that we are doing this wonderful, wonderful class with Linda Tellington herself in Rockville, Maryland, May 12th through 17th. It is a once in a lifetime experience to do a week of training with Linda and to be in the room with a lot of like-minded people who feel about animals as you do. And you are welcome to bring your pet, bring your friends. It's a great area. Tristan and I will be there. And it's a really you know, precious experience to be able to bring your dog to a Tellington T-Touch training. And you can review all the videos that I have. These are also on YouTube if you've missed them on Facebook Live and learn a lot about the touches and some of the equipment and things before you get there so that you can come well prepared to the class. There's also a great little book, Getting in Touch with Your Dog, that you can get from um, at either Amazon or you can uh, go to the T-Touch website and order it. So I look forward to meeting some of you there. I am hoping to have my sister, Dr. Judy Morgan, do a little bit more advertising on her website about this class because um, we do have a few spaces left and we'd love to have as many people come as want to in order to really experience uh, the wonderful opportunity of being with Linda Tellington at a class. And Tristan. <laughs> So it's still gray and rainy here. Apparently they were predicting warm and sunshine, um, but nature of course had her turn of events and we're getting another day of rain. It's gonna be beautiful tomorrow, which is great. I'll be in an indoor arena and most people will probably wanna be riding their horses, but I will be speaking at 12 or 12.30 down there. Um, please stop by and say hi. It's at Ray of Light Farm again. I think it's $15 to get in. There are six or seven speakers throughout the day. You can learn a lot of things about caring for horses and body work that could apply to a dog, a cat, a rabbit, or a horse. And I will be doing a demonstration of T-Touch and craniosacral therapy with a horse. And I will be at my booth 
selling flower essences. I will have dental drops there if you have a dog or a cat and you would like to get some dental drops um, to help your dogs have fresh breath and clean teeth. Show those beautiful teeth, Biss. Um, they are a wonderful thing to keep your dog from needing dental cleaning when they are older or if you have a dog that can't undergo anesthesia very easily. Some breeds don't do well with that and some ages, not a good idea. So the dental drops are great. I'll have some of those as well and my book and some of my sister's books. So please stop by the booth tomorrow and say hi and enjoy the day with your dog. And if you have a dog that pulls on his leash, just try the balance leash with him, the necklace around his neck, and just see if you can help him come back into balance with his body so that he can have a better time walking and that you can save both of you um, a lot of health issues later on from being pulled against each other as you go down the path for your walk. So this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for Conversations with a Corgi, number 43, looking at more T-Touch equipment. And I hope to see some of you tomorrow. And if not, then the following week, I will be signing books at the library in East Longmeadow, Massachusetts as well. I will see you online on Wednesday. Have a great day.